Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's Model Kit Review, we'll be taking a look at Hasegawa's 148 scale P47D25 Thunderbolt. This is Hasegawa kit number JT40. This particular boxing was released in 1996. This video is part two in the build log for the Hasegawa P47. And in this episode, we're going to be talking specifically about the engine installation and the engine cowl installation on this kit. I had some interesting difficulties with this part, and I'll go over the modifications that I had to make to the kit parts to get everything to fit correctly. In the previous episode, we talked about the kit supply decals and the fact that I didn't really like the cream color that those have to all of the white areas on the decals. I went to my decal dungeon and I found a set of P47M decals from Aeromaster, but that required me to convert the aircraft from a P47D to a P47M. And so I'm going to go over the modifications that I made to the engine and to the tail of the aircraft and to the underside of the wings to properly convert this kit to a P47M. In part one of the build log of this kit, we talked about the construction of the airframe in the interior on this kit. You can click the link above to see part one of the Hasgawa P47 build log. I recently decided to build three P47s concurrently, so I'm also working on the brand new Mini Art P47D, as well as the Academy P47N Thunderbolt. As I mentioned earlier, I am using an Aeromaster decal sheet for the markings on this aircraft. I'm planning to model aircraft number two. That is a P-47M1 flown by pilot John Allen of the 61st Fighter Squadron 56 Fighter Group in the spring of 1945. This is Aeromaster sheet number 48-784. Looking at the decals on the sheet, these decals look to be of excellent quality. They are in register, they look to be opaque, and I'm really excited to see how these perform on the actual kit. Because these markings are for a P47M, I had to convert this kit to M standard. Fortunately, the tail fillet for the P47M came in this boxing of Hasegawa's P47D so I was able to use that and glue that in place. That went on with no issues. The next item to be addressed was the underwing dive flaps that were present on the P47M. Using this reference drawing, I just eyeballed the dive flaps and I cut them out of thin sheet steering. I made one and then I used that as a template for the next one and I simply cut them out and glued them in place on the underside of the kit. We'll see how they look under paint, but I am happy with the way that these turned out. While cleaning up the seam on the underside of the fuselage, I noticed that in the section of the turbo supercharger outlet, there was a V-shaped seam, and it was on the inside where I really couldn't get to it. And instead of trying to fill that and sand that in that very difficult area, what I did was simply cut out another piece of the sheet steering, and I glued it in over that seam, and it came out perfectly. There's no seam there now. This is just a simple hack that I do sometimes on difficult to reach seams. The next item that I had to address in the P47M conversion was the crankcase on the engine of the R2800 found in the P47. This picture shows what comes in the box and this is appropriate for the P47D. However, the crankcase on the P47M engine is much different than the P47D engine. This picture shows the correct crankcase. This engine is from a late model Hasegawa Corsair. The solution I came up with was taking the crankcase from the late model Corsair and modifying it and placing it onto the Thunderbolt engine. Once the engine was finished painted and installed, I test fitted the engine cowl to the front of the aircraft. I found some pretty surprising quality issues with the cowl itself. The first of which was a dip in the top of the engine cowl. You can see in this picture I have filled and sanded that. There was also a sink mark on the cowl insert that fits inside the engine cowl, so I had to fill that. You can see that in this picture. And finally, I had some interference issues between the engine cowl and the engine when I went to mount the engine cowl over the engine and onto the airframe. The interference was between this tab on the cowl insert and some lower cylinders on the engine. And so I had to thin the tab on the insert. 
I also had to cut off material from several of the cylinders on the R2800. You can see that in this photo. Once that was done, I dry fitted the cowl back onto the aircraft and it fit just fine. I don't know if other people have experienced this, but I was really surprised to find these quality and fit issues associated with the engine cowl on this kit. Currently, I'm working on sanding and polishing out the airframe in preparation for paint. This one's going to be a very dark blue over natural metal silver, and I think it's going to be a very striking color scheme. I really like the fact that after this triple build, I'm going to have a bubble top P47D, a P47M, and a P47N on the shelf. I will keep you guys posted in the progress that I make on this kit and the Academy P47N and the Mini Art P47D in future build log videos. I know this kit has been superseded first by the Tamiya P47 kit and now by Mini Art's P47. And while those kits are a little bit more detailed and probably more accurate in certain areas, this kit is still a very straightforward build. It has a pretty low parts count to it, so it is more appropriate for newer modelers or modelers getting back into the hobby. All right, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you out there have built Hasegawa's P47D Thunderbolt, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, model on.